actually, Kevin, uh, two for you. One, when Blake Griffin, when Mike James, when Landry Shamit is getting up for those sorts of dunks, when the others are participating like that, how does that change or impact the potency of this team? Yeah, I mean, we expect everybody to come out there if they play and uh, play hard. And, um, you know, tonight guys came out there with extreme focus and just tried to be aggressive on both ends, not do too much, keep the game basic. And we was able to get some stops and some scores. When you saw James struggling, what was your initial reaction to that? I didn't I didn't realize what uh, what had happened until he had uh, started walking off the court. Uh, but we were supposed to run a play, and he wasn't in the spot. And then I looked at him. He was grimacing. So it sucks. It sucks. It sucks out because I want I want him to be out there. I know how much he cares. I know how much he wants to be in this moment. Um, it sucks. You know, I, I you know wish he just, uh, him a speedy recovery. We're going to keep him involved as, as much as possible. But, I mean, it's just a bad break. Greg Logan, Newsday. Greg, you're muted. Kevin, sorry, it took me a minute to unmute. Uh, just... How do you how do you gauge how this team handled the emotional blow of losing Harden? I mean, you still got you guys still played a, a terrific uh, defensive game. You know, just did did all this adversity that you've had all season kind of prepare you for this moment? I mean, yeah, we try not to be too emotional out there, but losing you know one of your leaders like that, this first player of the game, you know, it definitely um, we had to regroup for a couple of minutes and figure out what was next, but I think coaches, the coaching staff did a great job of moving forward and guys came in and just tried to play extremely hard. We didn't care about anything else but playing and executing the game plan and just, you know, leaving it all out there. So, you know, we're going to be thinking about James. We're going to be, you know, I'm definitely going to call him when I leave here, see how he's doing. But like I said, it's just a, a fuck, sorry, it's just a bad situation, man. I just, I hate that. I hate that it had to happen to him right now. Alex Schiffer, The Athletic. Hey, Kevin, you guys forced Milwaukee into shooting 20% from three and then forced a ton of turnovers on them and capitalize on them. Just what would you like about the defense tonight? Yeah, I mean, I think we were just, uh, you know, really after the first quarter, um, the offensive rebounding, I think we did a solid job more after that. You know, I think that's what got them going and had us down like 10 in the first quarter, them getting extra possessions. Uh, and that's what they thrive on. And I know they're not going to miss that many shots, six for 30. They're not going to miss that many shots. But if we... Uh, you know, they shot only three more shots than us. And when we played them before, they shoot 14, 15 more shots than us. So we just got to rebound the basketball, play extremely hard, and, and realize this team is a huge, you know, long team, big team. So we got to all be in the paint, helping each other out. And it's going to be a fun series. Christian Winfield, New York Daily News. What's going on, Kevin? Um, what type of impact does Blake have on a game when he's diving all over the floor and, and making those plays on loose balls like he did today? Well, I mean, when he just when he plays like that, um, you know, it just ignites the whole crowd and ignites our team. And he's diving on the floor, playing tough and big as a center. Um, and a lot of guys have, you know, moved down, I guess, as far as like guarding bigger players in this series. So um, Blake is one of those guys that's been battling all series. And, I mean, it's all playoffs and then the first game, um, played 35 minutes and grind like that. You know, very. Uh, very promising start to the series, but we got our we got our work cut out for us. We got a long ways to go. Brian Mahoney with AP. Hey, hey Kevin, it looked like when you picked up your fourth foul with about a minute and a half left in the third quarter, you kind of waved right away to Steve that you didn't want to come mm -hmm. off the floor. Um, why did you want to stay in that moment? And then you scored, I think, seven in a row right there. How much of an important stretch was that to get you guys going to the final quarter? Yeah, I thought it was an important stretch. There's only a minute to go, and I'm, I've been in the league for too long. So I, if I had got my fifth foul, uh, that would have just been a lack of IQ. So I just tried to play smart and realize that we needed to score some baskets going into the fourth. Um, and I was able to get some free throws, a nice little uh, three-point at the end. So um, I just, just got to play smarter next game. I, I, I'm, I, you know, the two fouls I got in the third quarter, uh, you know, I just got to be better. Vincent Goodwill, Yahoo Sports. <laughs> Katie, injuries have been such a big story this year in the playoffs all the way around, even before James's situation at night. I mean, when you're preparing and you're looking around the league and everything else, like, does that come into your mind? Do you try to keep all that stuff out? Like, how do you mentally prepare and not let the possibilities of the negative stuff like that come into play? 
I mean, it's just it's a life lesson. You know, you focus on what you can control. You know, that's one of those things that you can't control. Like somebody get injured or what can happen in the future. I mean, we're looking around the league and seeing what's happening, but you know, we focus on ourselves, each each of us individually. And when it's time to come together as a collective, we focus on that. So, um, you know, it's, we just control what we can control, man. And like I said, hopefully um, James is getting better by the minute, getting treatment by the minute, and uh, we'll see how he feels.